today on Faith Alive. Six ways that faith applies to daily life. Now, why am, I, why am I giving you this? Because I want you to have powerful prayer lives. But you're not going to have powerful prayer lives if you don't understand what faith is about. Do you hear me? Your prayer life is not going to be anything if you don't really understand how faith applies to your life because you have to have faith in God to have a powerful prayer life. He that comes to God must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hi, I'm Pastor Calvin Hooper. And I'm Pastor Valerie Hooper. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Faith, Faith Alive broadcast. broadcast. We thank you for tuning in. We hope that you'll tune in each week or DVR the program so that you won't miss a life-changing message from the Word of God. We believe that we can help you find purpose and direction for your life as you hear God's life-changing message. Stay tuned because we have some important information to share with you about how you can connect with us via social media at the end of our broadcast. And we want to invite you to be a part of one of our dynamic worship services here at the house. To step in for you and take the punishment that you deserved. That's what I'm talking about. You, you ever just took the time to think about how wonderful God is? Now, God did that for you. God gave you so many promises in his word. And guess what? God is not a man that he should lie. God is faithful to his word. Why don't the people of God believe God is able to do what he says? How do I know that the people of God are, don't really believe that God is able to do what he says? It's because you see the actions of the people of God. <laughs> My God. Childlike faith sees the world as exciting and adventurous and worth pursuing with our faith. So opportunities to please God override our complacency and the attitude of been there, done that, even though we may have. It is a part of us that we should never lose. It enables us to maintain our, our humility and enthusiasm and not become just a subculture or a routine. We are not to act childish, but have faith that is childlike. How many of you, when you were growing up, uh, some kids here maybe, uh, when your parents said they were going to give you something, for the most part, you know, that you believed that they were going to give it to you, right? Especially if you cleaned your room. Now, uh, just, just a little word to you parents that are rewarding your kids when they don't clean their room. You're setting them up for failure. Especially when they clean their room, when they, you know, were old enough to wash dishes, they wash the dishes, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Some of y'all looking at me like, kids watching. Your kids need to learn how to wash dishes, wash the clothes, cook. Vacuum, thank you. You're not doing your kid a favor by doing all the chores for them. Because when it's time for them to get out of the house, and it will be time. <laughs> it will be time to get out. <laughs> Don't get too comfortable. You need to learn what it's like to buy some groceries, what it's like to pay some bills, what it's like to support yourself. Hello, somebody. <laughs> it's going to be time to get out. <laughs> but when they get out and you haven't taught them how to do anything, guess what? They're stuck. But some of y'all are so nice. You'll just let them bring their own nasty clothes back to your house and you'll wash them for them. You'll fold their clothes. You'll pay all their bills. Yeah, I'm going to move on from that. There's a message in there. I think some of y'all get the picture. You need to tell Johnny how to handle his own business. 
before he gets out there and has to handle his own business. <laughs> There's a thing that we need to have to develop a prayer life that is powerful and that's consistent and that, and that, uh, that we, a thing we need to have in order to really have faith in God and that's the discipline of surrender. Surrender means we trust Jesus in all things without doubt or anything. We let go of our perceived rights, agendas, and opinions that are not lined up with his. So many times we're trying to have prayer lives that include, you know, our opinions. God, I'll pray about this, but here's the thing. <laughs> what kind of stuff is that? You can't go into, you know, praying to God and expecting God to really manifest some things if you've got a, a subset of, you know, standards. It just says, have faith in God. Just have faith. Remember Nike said, just do it. Some churches need to put that on the wall somewhere. Right. Just do it. Just have faith. If you just have faith, you'll see God do what he says. <sighs> Surrender. Surrender is a discipline because we have to make it a daily decision and practice. It's something we may never perfect, but we can aim our best to carry it out. Let me give you, I want to give you six things here. I have a lot up here. Uh, but I'm going to jump to these six things because this is really important. Six ways that faith applies to daily life. Then why am, I, why am I giving you this? Because I want you to have powerful prayer lives. But you're not going to have powerful prayer lives if you don't understand what faith is about. Do you hear me? Your prayer life is not going to be anything if you don't really understand how faith applies to your life because you have to have faith in God to have a powerful prayer life. He that comes to God must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, diligently seeking God is not, hey, you know, I have my one time a month prayer. That's not diligently seeking God. You shouldn't even tell anybody you pray once a month. <laughs> you pray what? Once a month? That's supposed to impress somebody? No. Somebody going to laugh at you. Man, I, I remember, I, you know, I pray two hours once a month. That's what I do every month, just two hours once a month. Wow. Yeah, the dedication, right, yeah. Six ways faith applies to daily life. Number one, faith is accounted for righteousness. Faith is accounted for righteousness. In, he, in uh, Isaiah 64 and 6, we're told that all of our righteousness is filthy rags to God. What does that mean? Anything that we do of our own power to make ourselves righteous is, is a null and void. It has no effect. We can't measure up to God's character, nor can we measure up to God's standards of righteousness on our own. Jesus compared our sin to leaven. It's like yeast in a lump of dough. If you add more dough without yeast, it doesn't change the dough, but rather the entire lump, including the unleavened dough, will soon be leavened as well. Likewise, we can add good deeds to our lives, but sin still remains. There has to Something greater than ourselves that cleanses us and makes us righteous. The righteousness of God is engrafted into us when we commit our hearts to Christ by faith. Your life is totally a faith walk. Let me say that again. In case you did not know, you, if you're a Christian, your life is a complete and total faith walk. Listen. God is not obligated to give you any uh, physical evidence, anything that you can see so that you'll believe. Man says, seeing is believing. God says, believe and I'll show you. 
See, we want God to operate according to our physical senses, but faith doesn't work that way. Our good deeds don't earn grace, therefore we have no boasting rights. It is only through faith in Christ that we receive the gift of God's righteousness that gives us salvation and renews us. Number two, faith is a defense against Satan. How many of you know that uh, when you got saved, uh, it did not mean that the devil was now finished bothering you? Oh, he's saved now. Well, Guys, we got to leave him alone. Hands off. <laughs> First Peter 5, verse 8 through 10 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, how? Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To be sober is to have a clear mind. Know what you believe and stand steadfast on the solid foundation of the word of God. So you have to, you have to, it's got to get to a point where as a believer, you, you just, you really know. That this is right. I mean, you just, despite how things look, what people say, how people treat you, how things are turning out for you right now, you got to just believe that this is right and things are going to work out for you no matter what the situation is. That is faith. We cannot give up when stuff gets tough. Because guess what? There are some times when things will get tough in your life. I told you before, we live in a fallen world. Things do happen. There is nothing that says, you know, uh, bad, you know, calamities or difficulties avoid the Christian. (laughs) No, not so. Things happen in your life just like they happen in other people who are not saved. We live in a fallen world. God never promised us exemption from pain, temptation, or suffering. The advantage we have is the promises of God. Romans 8, 28 tells us that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Psalm 1 tells us that the Lord knows the ways of the godly. If you are in Christ, God knows your way. God has promised to use use situations for your good. The Bible compares our lives as precious metals, such as gold and silver. Unless these metals are purified with fire, they never increase in their value. Faith gives us the ability to trust God to turn suffering into value. Satan desires to destroy us and use suffering to make us bitter toward God or discourage us into turning our back on God. Few Christians, very few Christians ever trust God completely and allow God to use their problems for their good. Why? Because when problems come, they find their own solutions. Oftentimes the solutions that they find make the situation worse than what it was or what it ever could have been in the first place. It makes the situation last longer than what it should have lasted. Why? Because we get to a point where we just can't see how things can work out. But if you understand faith and know the power of prayer, you will go into prayer. You will begin to seek God like never before, and you'll see God manifest some things in your life. Hallelujah. Satan desires to destroy you. How many times do we turn back when a little more endurance would allow God to reward us according to his promises? Think about it. Think about a runner. The Bible talks about how we, you know, run run this this race, the the walk, the faith, you know, the running the race, you know, walking by faith and all that kind of stuff. Imagine a runner running a mile and nine-tenths when he's supposed to run two miles. He never has the satisfaction of crossing the finish line. Many times in our lives, we, we get to a point where the blessing is just around the corner. But instead of having just a little bit more endurance, a little more faith in God, 
We just, you know what? Oh, I'm tired. I quit. I quit. I can't make it. God has made promises to you that he does keep. If I gave you right now, if I opened up right now and gave people an opportunity to just testify about things that God has done, I'm sure there'd be a whole lot of testimonies in here. People could testify how God came through. I'm telling you, we've had some situations in our lives, my wife and I, that <laughs> it was nothing but God. See, sometimes situations come where there's nothing you can do other than pray. And see the power of prayer at work? Hallelujah. We can't give up. Number three, faith is increased by our commitment. Faith is increased by our commitment. There was a situation where there was a man who had a possessed son. The disciples of Jesus had faced similar challenges, but this time they were completely unsuccessful. Jesus came and set the young man free. The disciples questioned why. Jesus gave an interesting reply. He said, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. See, it takes some commitment. It takes some commitment, first of all, just to pray. How many of you would agree? Because if, if you're really honest with yourself, you know, your schedule can get to such a point where you can go all throughout the day and realize at the end of the day, man, I didn't even pray. Now, some of y'all, maybe y'all, you know, were born holy, but y'all don't, don't have those, those issues, you know. Um, but those, those real folk in here, you know, that has happened to you. You've gone all day without reading the word. Again, that's just for the real folk, those of you who are on another, another you know, you were born saved, all that kind of stuff. You know. It takes commitment to pray. It certainly takes commitment to fast. Now, we're going to have a period of fasting here um, next week. Yeah, this, this week coming up. Um, and some of y'all probably like, well, like, we usually do, you know, 21 days, 10 days, whatever. How come we're not doing 20? We need to do 21 days. Well, Scripture, first of all, that says we have to do 21 days. You can't find it because I wouldn't be bold enough to just get out here and tell you that if I know you couldn't find it. <laughs> you ain't going to find anything to say, oh, we got to start the year off with a 21-day fast. We should start on day one. We should start on January 1st. Then you ain't going to find that. And one, one thing that I'm not about here is religion. I'm not about religion. I'm not about just doing stuff just because, well, it was, we did this, you know, 30 years. You know, grandma did like this, and her mom did like that, and, I, and my mama did like that, and all that kind of stuff. And your mama, your grandmama, and her mama were all wrong, too. We're only doing five days this time simply because we're going to do more throughout the year. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, there's going to be some supernatural things happening in this house. Amen. Believe it. I'm telling you. But in this situation, Jesus first said that their failure was unbelief. And then said the key was prayer and fasting. The Bible says each one of us is given a measure of faith by God. Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing the word of God. That's why you need to be in church. Well, you say, well, I can have church, you know, by watching TV. No, it's not the same thing. Because if you read the scripture, God tells us, forsake not the assembly of ourselves together as the matter of some is, but exhorting one another, so much the more. I'm sorry, but in your house, in front of the TV, and everybody else in, is in their house in front of their TV, you're not together exhorting one another. <laughs> it can't get done. There are some things that social media and the Internet cannot replace. Many times people say they wish they had more faith. Increased faith comes by cultivating a close relationship with God. 
Number four, faith is the only way to please God. So if you're looking for another way to please God, if you're looking for an alternative route, there is none. Save yourself the effort and just have faith in God. Whatever he has promised, whatever he has promised to you in his word, it will happen if you have faith in it. And, and just let, let, me, let me insert something there. When we're talking about having faith in God, we're talking about having faith in what he has said. Okay? Now, we're not talking about um, having faith in what you have superimposed into it. It's a, this is not about um, naming and claiming. It, let me say it like this. It's not about naming and claiming, but it is about naming and claiming. What I mean? Well, whatever is in the word of God, you can name it and you can claim it. But whatever you're just making up, like, you know, if you give, like, you know, $54, you know, $20.14 to this ministry, you know, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. Now, that's not in the word of God. And, and I'm kind of all over the place today. But I have to say this. I have to say this. Um, stop being duped by stuff on TV. Some of y'all... Let me say it like this. Some, I'm looking up at the ceiling, some in the body of Christ. Some in the body of Christ won't tithe or give 50 cents to their church. But they'll write big checks because somebody on TV said send $1,000 and this is what's going to happen. I'm going to send you this cloth and everything's going to be well. Miracle cloth. I touched it. Send me $1,000. Now, nothing wrong with planting seed, but there are, there are some uh, spiritual manipulation tactics going on in the world. And you just got to be wise enough to understand some things ain't right. I don't care how many people in your church. I don't care if you got 55, 60,000, 100,000 people in your church. There's some things that are not right and cannot be supported by the word of God. Scripture study and a strong prayer life are vital ingredients. Jesus taught that God deals with us according to how we use what he has given us. <clears throat> Number five, faith must be alive. Faith must be alive. Faith is believing God and acting upon that belief. Believing alone means little. Do you hear that? You have to do more than just believe. You have to take some action. We can believe something without demonstrating faith. For example, we can believe that there is a God, but if we don't put any action to what we're saying and we don't apply his word to our life, then we're not exercising faith. So therefore, we have a dead faith. Faith without works is dead. It's scripture, y'all. I'm not making this up. Faith without works is dead. So stop asking God. Stop taking those same old dusty, dry prayers to God. <laughs> asking God for stuff. Not willing to apply his word to your life. Just be quiet until you're ready to change. God, move on my behalf. God, I, I thank you, Lord. And, and, and you still not willing to change. You still drinking, still smoking, still running around, fornicating, committing adultery, cussing folk out, all kind of stuff. And you're talking about God is good. Well, we know he is good. Just you ain't. You need to change some stuff. You're talking about you want God's blessings to overtake you and all that kind of stuff. You know, I want the windows of heaven open over my life and won't give a dime. Wow. Wow. 
I want God's grace to abound towards me so that I'll have, you know, an abundance for every good. But you don't even give at all. Talking about faith. We, we still in the house here. Faith. You've got to understand how faith works in order to have a powerful prayer life. In order to see some things actually transpire in your life, you have to understand how faith works. Faith works well when you are doing well in obedience. In everything. What do I mean by that? You can't just be faithful uh, in something. You can't be selectively faithful. Well, I'm going to love my brother, but I don't know about forgiving him. Well, how can you love him and not forgive him? I'm going to pray for my church, but I ain't going to give anything. God released supernaturally into the body. You know, well, well God is saying, why don't you release My God. And number six, by faith, we claim the promises of God. When we ask in prayer, we must pray in faith. And that goes to praying God's will. What do I mean by that? You have to pray the word of God over your life. Whatever God's word says, you can take it to the bank. Pray his word over your life. Don't just come up with just... You know, some people like well, that's all the time that we have for today. And I certainly hope that something was said to help encourage your faith. Listen, we all have difficult times and we often don't know what to do. But I want you to know that you can be victorious over every challenge. I want to also encourage you to visit our website at householdoffaithcfc.org and take advantage of the resources that we have available for you there. 2014 is a year of acceleration of blessings and Household of Faith is here for you. Today's message is available in its entirety on CD or DVD. For more information on this product offer and or other ministry tools and resources, visit our website at householdoffaithcfc.org. You may also call us at 512-341-9377 or write to Post Office Box 5056, Round Rock, Texas 78683. Once again, that's P.O. Box 5056, Round Rock, Texas 78683. Just as soldiers are trained for battle, Christians are transformed daily in order to walk and live as God requires. But you don't have to do it alone. Pastor Calvin Hooper's Eight Essentials for Following Jesus, How to Walk the Walk and Not Just Talk the Talk, is available to help you. Get your copy today by texting 8 Essentials to 71441, visiting householdoffaithcfc.org or amazon.com. Be blessed in all you do.